You're listening to the Stay Sore Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the Stay Sore Podcast. I'm your host, Bo Skitsko, and today I have the pleasure of talking to my friend, a professional co-worker as well, Lexi Marshall. Lexi is a registered dietitian, right? You just became a registered dietitian, yeah. right? And that's why I wanted to talk to her about nutrition. Makes sense, right? So uh, first of all, congratulations. Thanks, Bo. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we, we worked together before. Lexi was, for many years now, a personal trainer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have something in common. We, we like to help people live a better life. <laughs> Now I stuck to the physical part of it. Lexi went the nutrition route, but you're still also a trainer, right? Yes, yeah. I've been training for the last seven years and now just including more of the nutrition component to help people feel better. All right, so I I think both go hand in hand. Working out makes you uh, better, healthier, stronger mentally and physically, and then nutrition helps you staying healthy, losing weight. So all of that goes one hand in hand, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So if you don't mind, I want to raise some somewhat practical, but also mindset and ch- challenging yeah. questions, if you don't mind. Sure. So in America, there, there's, there's for some reason a lot of okay and then overweight and then also obesity and people have a lot of health issues and I think a lot of it has to do with nutrition. Do you think there's an, a problem with uh, the American diet in general? And if there is one, what is the problem? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think we could start off by going in a million different directions with that question. But I think it comes down to not just the composition of the American diet, what's available. Because it's actually a blessing that we have so much availability in this country. I just think that people don't understand what food works for them. and. Food is not just calories in and calories out. Of course, we need to be in a deficit. Um, In order to lose that weight, science will always win, but we have to figure out how we can approach that weight loss from a healthy standpoint and Mm -hmm. eat from a healthy standpoint. So the American diet, we know, has a lot of preservatives. It's the portion sizes when we go out to social events is super large. So it's just kind of pushed on us to to engage in that kind of eating and that culture. I think though it comes down to really just being more mindful and educated as to, you know, okay, what am I doing wrong right here? What can I do to improve? And what do I have control over in my current life that I can change for the better? So I definitely think that there's so much variety. It can become almost overwhelming for people that don't have the education and experience in health and wellness like me and you do. Mm -hmm. Because like we said, fitness, wellness, health, it all goes hand in hand with food but someone who is just exercising and just eating what they've been eating for their whole lives, they might not understand that relationship that, oh, you know, food can have a huge impact on my results and help me feel better with this exercise Mm -hmm. or with this therapy. So yes, it's, I definitely think that there is room for improvement, but it comes down to individual needs and someone to help you get started in that right direction, I think. I I like that answer because, yes, we have a wide variety. It's just up to the individual to pick what's right for the individual. Would you agree uh, that, or do you think that a big problem is that food is marketed a certain way, meaning uh, some bright color sugary drinks are marketed as athletic quote unquote drinks. (laughs) Then there's the problem of a bottle of water costing more than a burger. Yeah. Exactly. And so a lot of it has to do with just business, sales and marketing, and people have been educated by TV rather than somebody like you or even me. Exactly. Exactly. The ideology behind you know, what drives these businesses to promote weight loss supplements and health and everything, at the end of the day, you have to look, are their intentions, you know, really helping you or do they have their best intentions at heart really no it's just about the bottom dollar at the end of the day for some of these companies and you know we fall into this trap because our food is marketed you know healthy or natural organic all these things really don't even have a super um concentrated meaning like natural what's natural you know what i mean yes (laughs) unfortunately even the word natural on marketing doesn't even mean much anymore exactly exactly Um, Okay, uh, I, I see where you're going. So yes. we, we mentioned calorie, or you mentioned calorie deficit for weight loss, and then you mentioned the word healthy. What's mm-hmm. the difference between eating for health 
and eating for weight loss. Is it the same thing? Is there a difference and what is it? Yeah, that's a great question. That's definitely something that I first and foremost talk to my clients about when coming into nutrition coaching or just looking to improve their health through nutrition because the first thing someone wants to improve when they come to see me is losing weight. And it's not about, oh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling better. They strictly tie their success to being smaller or you know, weighing less. Mm -hmm. And they'll do that even when not paying attention to how it actually makes them feel. Someone could be losing weight you know, a revolutionary weight change and they could lose all this weight and actually they feel so much crappier and they, you know, their social lives has been compensated mm -hmm. or they are so restrictive they actually form disordered eating and that message is strictly pushed from our culture today. I mean, there's skinny popcorn for crying mm -hmm. out loud. It's just popcorn, but it's marketed that way so people feel more motivated to choose that, mm -hmm. but it's not teaching you about the nutritional value of food. So I think eating for weight loss is specifically focusing on those specific um, standards or um, markers, you know, losing weight, you know, trying to be this aesthetic or standard that has been pushed on us. Eating for health, I think we talk about not only the, the physical benefits, but also the mental and the spiritual ones as well. We address nutrition as not just a way to make ourselves, you know, smaller or um, leaner, but okay, if we have aesthetic goals, how can we do that from a healthy place? Okay. We have to address not only our exercise, but also our stress, how we're sleeping, our relationship with food, and altogether that helps us, I think, bring harmony into our lives that you know, we're able to improve our mental, spiritual, and physical health all at once instead of just you know, thinking we're improving one part of the game and then others falling short. So strictly going for weight loss is not necessarily equaling uh, health, but the other way around, you can lose weight in a healthy way that yeah. could probably work, right? Yeah. Or should should work. For, uh, okay, I understand. So we, we talked about general ideas. Let, mm -hmm. Let's let's have the listeners, or if it's on YouTube, the the, the uh, people that watch this video, let's give them some practical tips. So can you give me like two or three tips for eating healthy, and two or three practical tips for if somebody wants to lose weight? or even more specific, body fat, because losing weight's not always contributing to body fat loss, right? right exactly. So something practical people can uh, start doing today, tomorrow? Yeah, I think three tips um, just to get you started, and I think coming from a perspective that, okay, I wanna make a change and I want this to be sustainable and aligned with my vision and my health goals, not anybody else's. So what's gonna help me stay accountable and stay on track? I think first and foremost, if you're super lost or just not educated and maybe you're trying to do so much that you're overwhelmed, that maybe you feel like quitting, finding someone that you trust to just help you navigate those first few steps, whether it's a coach, whether it's a dietitian, whether it's a physician, a friend that's been in the health and wellness industry for a long time, you just need someone to help you build confidence in those first steps okay. to actually make them. So finding somebody you can be accountable to and somebody who can keep an eye on you, what's another tip? Exactly, I think another tip um, aside from accountability is just starting to initiate small changes instead of huge revolutionary ones. So, you know, every day, whether it's nutrition you're trying to focus on or exercise, you know, what can I do every day or every week that is going to help me stay accountable and make changes so I can master them and then move on to the next. Instead of trying to do a million things inconsistently, what can I do consistently every day? And that can be, for nutrition, an example would be, all right, I know that cutting up vegetables is my mortal enemy. Like, I, it's, it's tough, it's challenging, or just meal prepping in general. But thinking about how that helps me in the long run and finding out ways around my schedule and my lifestyle that I can actually, okay, how can I meal prep? What am I going to do? Not just saying what I'm going to do, but actually an action plan to make that vision happen, make that change actually happen. And then it becomes habitual. And that's, you gotta form habits, you know what I mean? You I gotta understand. start small somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so sustainability. Yes. Like, what, what small step can I start today that I can still keep doing 10 years from now, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And, and feeling also like that, having that education and that why behind that, I think people just don't like to be told what to do. They actually have to feel and appreciate your understanding for that to happen. And that motivation behind that is really what's gonna drive them to make that change instead of just being told. So one picture is more worth than a thousand <laughs> words. Like yes. Once you feel it, 
you don't need a book to tell you the science behind it. You feel better, you know it works, right? Exactly. So um, that, that's a good point because a lot of times, and I see, I'm sure you saw that too for me personally, okay, this is, winter is over, the first sunshines come in and people are, okay, I need to get ready for beach. Yeah. For, for beach season, for a two-piece bikini, and all of a sudden they do everything for two weeks, burn out and give up. Yeah. And the goal is small wins over time exactly. that you can keep and not just crash diet until I <laughs> feel like you said, like crap. Exactly, but that's what most people do, and it's not their fault. That's just kind of what's pushed in our culture, and I think that um, now it's getting better with more people venturing out of like conventional medicine and actually listening to what people need. Um, I think that it's getting better, but you're absolutely right. There's this constant fight between, you know, trying to, to reach an aesthetic goal and actually feeling better and trying to meet in the middle between those two. I always try to educate my clients that uh, don't overdo it, don't do something you can't keep doing, and the most important one, get healthy and then the looks will come. Like healthy people usually look good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And vice versa, if you're unhealthy, it's gonna be very hard to look good. <laughs> yeah. Health is a practice, it's a daily practice. It's not a punishment, it's just something that we should work towards every day. It, it is. Okay, so we got two tips. We got uh, finding someone, some, someone like a coach or a professional or a friend for accountability and somewhat guidance and then we have sustainability. Anything else? Anything practical? I would just say, you know, reflect also, be mindful, reflect on what hasn't worked for you in the past. Because if you're automatically going to that thought of specifically for dieting or exercise, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat clean for for three months and mm -hmm. then I'll be happy with where I'm at. When actually we can measure measure success in a bunch of different ways and it's not really a healthy standpoint or a sustainable one. Because what's the game plan after that three months is up? What happens if we don't reach that aesthetic goal? What happens if we're happier at a weight that's heavier than that one that you were gonna feel happy at, you know, at the mm -hmm. end of that journey? So being mindful of what hasn't worked for you in the past to help fuel your new journey coming forward. So I think being mindful of that, but also that you know, nutrition is one component of health, right? We've got to explore stress and sleep and our relationships and exercise. And um, I think that we just can't go into it blindly. I think that accountability person or that coach can really help you kickstart your mindset around that change. But m being mindful, that's what I push on my clients, just be mindful. How is this making you feel? You have to be connected with yourself in order to register how you're feeling. If you're listening to everyone else, telling them or telling you how to feel and how to look, you're so disconnected from actually, yeah. you know, who you are and how you feel. How are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to appreciate change when you can't even recognize it? So I would say that for sure. Just being present and being mindful a little bit more, I would say. Okay. As vague so, as that is. <laughs> no, I understand. Let's go even more detailed because yeah. I know people love getting very specific, yeah. uh, very specific tips or guidance or, or ideas that they can start exploring and trying out. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about journaling uh, in general and then journaling in terms of food? But because I, I even tell some of my clients, like you said, exploring stress, for example, mm -hmm. right? If you don't sleep enough, you're gonna overeat the next day. If you stress <laughs> out, you could, what's called stress eating, right? Mm -hmm. So journaling and then tying those behaviors to food and as well as journaling for nutrition, meaning calorie counting and stuff. How do you feel about all that? Yeah, that's a great, great area of nutrition, right? The tracking and the calorie counting and the logging. I think for some people it can bring benefit. It can bring awareness. Journaling, I push on all of my clients because it does. It helps you be more conscious and present in your choices and it can help you be reflective on, you know, what, what did I do today? What did I eat today that's making me feel this way? Mm -hmm. Or just taking a second, because we're always going at a million miles an hour, like, okay, this is how I felt today. This is what I ate today. I think it can be a useful tool that way. Mm -hmm. Some people get obsessed with it, and that's when it becomes dangerous, or the eating po portion. That's why it's helpful to have a coach or someone to help guide you, because um, we don't want them to go down that route, which happens Absolutely. a lot of time. 
So the disordering, disordered eating can happen and we just wanna avoid that. So for a lot of my clients, what I'll have them do is actually like, it's up to them. If they feel confident, if they don't feel the need to do it, then most likely they're ready to log or ready to track because then they're not tying and they're not obsessing over every little thing. Um, however, I also do like photo logs. So all they do is like snap a picture, they'll upload it and I'll get, generally give them feedback. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give them pointers and tips, but from a very compassionate and just helpful place, not a criticizing one. Mm -hmm. um, so that they understand that they are doing a good job. They're definitely improving their health by making these changes. They're realistic and aligned with what they're doing, um, but we're not getting obsessed with having to put them into a tracker because calories we know are helpful when looking at you know a deficit or trying to lose mm -hmm. weight but also they're subjective like an apple an apple an apple can have 100 calories here it can have 60 calories here and it can be the same looking apple but the nutritional value is different so i think that people need to just slow down journal get back to them that's something that i promote 100 percent. i think it's an act of self-care and it brings a lot of awareness to what they're doing okay mm -hmm. well tell me if you agree with this i think I, I know that some people like are afraid of journaling. They just mm -hmm. don't even want to go into it. And some people get very, like very compulsive and very addicted to that yeah. a little too much. And I understand, but I think at some point everyone should be journaling at least three months, two, three months as an educational tool, because yeah. I would say probably nine out of 10 people or more have no clue what the caloric or like just nutrition value yeah. of foods are they are very disconnected from reality like people keep thinking this is healthy this is healthy this is healthy when in reality it turns out to be a whole bunch of sugar a whole bunch of like yeah. uh, that or that so I need I think everyone needs to journal at some point for a little bit as an educational tool to have like the light bulb aha moment like mm -hmm. whoa I didn't know now I know. Do, do you agree with that? I, I do. I think that it's up to the coach and the nutrition or professional, whoever's working with that patient, to really gauge that based on the, the client or patient's history. If they have you know, no history and they're just starting out or maybe, maybe they, they don't have any stress, they're just looking for more education because they don't know or they've mm -hmm. never done this before, then absolutely. Someone coming from um, a very anxious family, someone that has disordered eating or someone that has come from a history of chronic dieting might go 110 into it where it's actually doing them more harm than good and they're obsessing over it. So yeah. there's definitely balance there and it definitely depends on who you're working with. And that's why social media is not your friend because that could work for someone, um, yeah, definitely. but it's not necessarily what's gonna be best for you. Understood, mm -hmm. understood. First of all, thank you for the conversation yeah. and for being here. Any last words of wisdom for somebody who is just have an, has an unhealthy relationship with food or is nervous about it or like any words of advice or wisdom, where do you start? Yeah, first I would say you're not alone. That's very common for mm -hmm. people to feel that. So um, you're not alone and there's people to help you get to that healthy place. And the fact that you are acknowledging it, that you need help is the first step. Actually finding someone to, to take you under their wing and guide you in that place that would be my next step for that person. But just in general, you have one life to live. You wanna feel the best as well as look your best. Yeah. So in order for that transformation to happen, we've gotta start getting connected back with ourselves. And that includes with food. Instead of tying caloric values, just caloric values, or just numbers like Weight Watchers does to food, it doesn't teach you the value of that. It doesn't teach you the relationship that you have with that because we have physical needs, we also have emotional needs. Mm -hmm. So I think that we just need to cut out all of this diet culture BS and just get back to eating more wholesome for ourselves and for our needs. And there's people out there to help you and they wanna help you because no one wants to feel like they're eating minimal amounts and stressing themselves out. Like we wanna do this from a sustainable place. We wanna do this for the long run and there's a way, there's a okay. way. Yeah. Um, Lexi, where can people find you if they want to get in contact with you? Yeah, so you can find me on my website at LexiMarshallNutrition.com and I also have a, um, a following on Instagram as well. It's just Lexi Marshall Nutrition. I try to keep it as, as clear, concise, and as simple as possible. Hey, I'll so. link it down below. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. um,
If, if you guys want to hear more from Lexi, just leave a comment or, or like the video and then we'll get Lexi back on, on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was awesome, Bo. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>